Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to talk about mineral identification. There are nearly 2500 minerals are known to occur within Earth's crust, and there are about 100 occurring in abundance. Of those 100, 15 compose the common rock forming minerals. Geologists and mineralogists need to identify these different minerals, and physical properties are a valuable key in identifying minerals because it's quick. The other way of identifying mineral would be laboratory tests and chemical analysis, which is long and tedious. So in this lecture, we are going to explore physical properties and tools that are used in identifying minerals. We are not going to identify each mineral and state their properties. There are big charts that does that. But what we are going to explore is physical tools and properties that can help you identify a mineral. So how are minerals identified using physical properties? Well, there are few tools to identify minerals based on physical properties, and they are optical properties, crystalline shapes, mineral strength, density and specific gravity, and other tools like taste, look, and feel. All these are physical properties that can aid you and help you in identifying a mineral because each mineral has its own physical properties that is unique to that specific mineral. So let's look at the first one, optical properties. Optical properties, minerals have many optical properties like luster, streak, ability to transmit light and color. All these are optical properties and they are physical properties that can be used in order to identify a mineral. So what are these? Well, luster is the appearance of light reflected from the surface of a mineral. There are minerals like this one that does not reflect a lot of light. But for example, diamond has high luster and the surface of diamond reflects a lot of light. Therefore, we can use luster in order to identify a mineral. The second one or the second optical property is streak. Streak is the color of a mineral when powdered. We have minerals, so for example, like pyrite, the color of the mineral is yellow. But when you powder it, this is a powdering plate. When you rub it against it, the powder of pyrite will not look yellow, but actually it will look black. So streak is a good indicator or is a good optical property that can tell us about minerals and we can identify minerals with it. Another optical property is ability to transmit light. We have translucent or opaque minerals. And the way we judge a mineral to be either translucent or opaque is by thin sections. Thin sections are thin slices of rocks or minerals that are put between two glasses. We put this glass under a microscope and then we shine a light through it. If the mineral, for example, you see this mineral is translucent, it lets light to go through it. We say that this mineral is translucent, but if it doesn't transmit light, then we say it's opaque, just like you can see it right here. So we don't judge ability to transmit light by holding a big mineral and then putting it in front of light and see if it transmits light. But actually, we have to cut it, make thin sections out of it and see if the grains are translucent or opaque. Finally, the final optical property that we have is color. Color is the most conspicuous characteristic of any mineral. And that's why I didn't put any pictures. I remember my teacher telling me that do not depend on color in order to identify a rock since depending on color is extremely misleading. So we have luster, we have streak, we have ability to transmit light, and we have color. All these are optical properties that can aid and help us in identifying a mineral. The next mineral identification tool is crystalline shape. Certain crystal shapes can be associated with certain minerals. The term used to describe general shapes of a crystal is habit. Certain crystals take certain shapes, and as soon as we recognize this crystal shape, we can recognize the mineral. So for example, right here, this is malachite, and the crystal shape resembles human breast. If we see this type of crystal shape, we immediately know that this is malachite. And this is concave step-like sharp crystals. This is bismuth. When we see this type of crystalline shape, we immediately know this is a bismuth crystal. The final one, this is a grape-like crystalline shape. And this is for botryoidal hematite. When we see this type of crystalline shape, we immediately know that this is hematite. So you see, by identifying crystalline shape, we can identify the mineral that associate with it. Another physical tool that we can use in order to identify a mineral is mineral strength, which is minerals' ability to withstand stress and deformation. In describing how minerals react to stress and deformation, mineralogists use terms like tenacity, hardness, 
cleavage and fracture. Tenacity is minerals resistance of breaking and deforming, whereas hardness is measure of the resistance of a mineral to abrasion or scratching and cleavage and fracture is tendency of a mineral to break. The most important is hardness. Geologists use hardness as an indicator to see what mineral they have. There is a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the softest mineral and 10 being the hardest. Diamond is the hardest mineral. The mineral that you have, you usually rub it against something hard like a piece of glass or a nail or your fingernails or knife and you see how hard it is. By estimating the hardness of the mineral, you can know what type of mineral you have have because certain minerals have certain hardnesses. Another physical property that we have is density and specific gravity. Specific gravity is a dimensionless number representing the ratio of a mineral's weight to the weight of an equal volume of water. Density is matter per unit volume. We can use density in order to identify a mineral. In my field geology class, we used specific gravity and density in order to identify minerals. We took samples and we measured the specific gravity. We compared them with a list of specific gravities of different minerals and we found out what kind of mineral we have. This is how you use specific gravity and density in order to identify minerals. Beside all these physical properties, there are other ways we can identify a mineral by taste, look or feel. Usually, something very interesting that geologists do in order to identify a mineral is licking the rock and other scientists find that very strange about geologists. But taste can be a very good indicator of what kind of mineral you have. So for example, borax tastes sweet but halite tastes salty. So if you have a piece of halite, you don't know whether it's halite or not. You taste it. If it's salty, you know it's halite beside identifying other physical properties. Hangside is salty, sylvite is bitter, and there are other minerals that taste different. And visual seeing the rock is a very good tool in identifying a rock. The feel of the mineral also can tell you about the mineral. This is talc. Talc feels soapy. When you hold talc in your hand, it feels soapy. And immediately when you hold the talc mineral, if you don't know what it is by looking at it, when you feel it, when you hold it in your hand, you know it's talc because it's soapy. So either by taste or look or feel, we can identify a mineral if we have previous experiences with it. And with this, we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap, 